Okay. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. Excited to get a chance to connect with both of you. So um, I'm hoping we can have like a, a robust discussion about uh, various topics, but um, mostly about things having to do with what it what the experience is like of being a black artist in a um, in a smaller market and any other things that kind of come up connected to that would be great to chat about. So, so let's start off with some introductions because I have I have worked with Imani um, one time before. I haven't worked with James. I've seen your work a couple of times, but um, why don't you start us off, Imani, and just tell us? Um, let's just talk about your you know background as a as an actor and um, and a little bit about what you're up to these days. Yeah, so I, so I'm, um, I'm from Sacramento, so I haven't left quite yet. Um, but I, I've been acting since I was, I mean, I think I was always acting as a kid. Whether, but I think it was more so telling. I love to imitate people and tell stories. And then uh, when I was about ten or twelve, that's when I started doing. I started doing Shakespeare, and then uh, kind of took a little break and just, you know, was a kid for a while, and then. And when I went to uh, high school, I started getting back into theater. So I was one of those typical theater kids. Um, and so since then, I've, I've done work, community work, community theater work. I've done uh, professional theater work. I've done a little bit of film. But recently, I've transitioned into sort of being behind the camera and kind of using my creativity from that perspective. So um, I, I got all my training as an actor from theater. But I would say that my, my favorite medium right now is film and sort of writing for film and writing roles for, for Black actors. So that, that's a little bit about me. All right. Okay, great. Thank you. James. Um, well, uh, I started acting probably, um, I knew I, I wanted to act when I was like, I'll say like four. My, my first thing I did, I was like four years old. I did a skit for my mom, <laughs> and my cousin. He um, did a skit and I didn't, even, I didn't have any lines or anything. All I did was I had a, a um, I had a robe. We had these little robes, and it was like a kind of like a boxer robe. And so and my cousin he put all these things, these little bags. Cause I was supposed to be the drug dealer, and we were trying to shake up this boxer. We were trying, to, we were trying to um, get him to just to uh, throw the fight. And so I just opened my my my, uh, my robe up and had all the stuff in my in my sleeve or underneath my, my my robe. And then I just saw my mom smile, and that was that was it. I, I knew I wanted to be a, an entertainer for for men because it was just the the change in my mom's face. Like she was sad before that. Then after that, it was like she was just happy. She just I was like, man, that's crazy. So I, that just made me want to continue. And then um, as I grew old, grew older, I started watching shows like Ricky, you know, um, Silver Spoon. And oh my gosh, and I used to love Silver Spoons. I, Ricky I, I used to watch them right around. <laughs> Ricky Schroeder used to ride around in this train in this house, and I was like, I need one of those. But I felt like the only way I could get it was if I was on TV. Yeah. And so I just started pursuing that and tried to, you know, like I would watch, I watched a lot of like TV shows and movies and just tried to just, I, as younger, I, I used to always be able to do voices. I used to be able to do the cartoon voices, all, any voice I could do it. And then as I got older, I started getting, getting into trouble, started running with the wrong people and doing the wrong thing. And my dad told me he was going to kick me out the house when I was like in seventh grade. And, and I said, okay, you know what? So then he put me in music. So I started, I got in band and went in band. And I was in band all through high school and then got back to theater my senior year and just kept on going from there. And now I'm here. I love doing theater. It's just like one of my passions. Yeah. Um, acting period is, is just, it's just something, it's just the chance to, to not be myself. It's just what I like about it. I love to be somebody else and not, and, and get, you know, and just get the satisfaction of seeing somebody um, like entertained by, by, by me being, not my, being me, but just having fun at the same time. So one of the things that, that you talked about, and that also ties in a little bit with what Imani's doing now um, with writing and directing which I would assume is part of where that comes from is wanting to create more opportunities for yourself and others. But like I, you mentioned 
Silver Spoon. And I remember being um, 10, 11, 12, watching, like there were a whole bunch of shows that I used to watch. And that's really where my dreams for acting started to really come alive. And, you know, just, I used to feel like that thumping of my heart and that, uh, you know, a real fervor for like, this is what something that I really wanted to do. And so a, a question that I have though, is that at what Oh, at the time or at any point since then, have you felt like those dreams or those aspirations that you had have been limited by being a black actor? Like, you know, have so you're, there you are watching Silver Spoons and thinking, yeah, I want to do that. That's what I want. And then what how has that um, dream compared with the reality of the types of roles maybe that you have that have been available to you that's a, that's um that's crazy because back then and that's a good good question too because back then as a as a four-year-old or when i was watching i mean not even just because you know you, you watch silver spoon um different strokes um you watch all these shows and you know you you, you don't just have you know just, you know, white actors, you have every, you know, it's a whole, like at that time, I didn't really understand it. But then mm -hmm. as I grew up and, and, and started watching, started getting into the, the industry, I started seeing that, I, oh, wow, you know, it's, it's harder. And then uh, um, as getting the theater is even, even harder than it is in film, I feel like, and, you know, I, I, I moved to LA for a little bit and I, I, I tried my, dip my feet in the waters for a little bit. And, and it's just, it's a whole different, different ball game with theater to me. Like theater is, um, it's just, it's the roles are very limited. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then in, the, in, the, in a market like where we're at yeah. in, in, in Sacramento, it's even more limited mm -hmm. because, you know, especially with the, you know, with the professional houses, it's, it's even more limited to where it's like, hey, you know, be for, few and far between, you know, of, of the roles that we can get, you know, so, you know, I can only, you know, I could, it's not even a handful of, of theaters that will, you know, that has, have roles that are available. And so when, when those parts do come available, you want to, you kind of almost like, oh, uh, you know, you want to get on it. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, you can kind of miss out. But it's, I do feel like um, it does, it is, it is harder, you know, as, 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 a, as a black actor. And I thought about it and just, just going across the line, it's like, dang, it's, Sometimes that was the reason why, you know, I never tried to go equity or, you know, do it because if I go equity, uh, there's not going to be any, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be, it's going to limit, limit me for sure. Especially I like doing shows in Sacramento. I, I love Sacramento. I love, I love doing theater in Sacramento. That's where I was born, where I was raised. But, you know, I, if, as soon as I go equity or do anything like that, that it's over. I'm not going to do any more. I won't be able to do any more shows in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. Let's hear from you, Imani. What are your thoughts about this? Yeah, I mean, I think to James's point where I think also to the structure of theater makes it harder to get roles because with film, you know, there's a film about whatever. Let's just say Training Day, for example. That's a movie, right? There's a lot of roles for Black people in that movie, just depending mm -hmm the setting and the, the subject and whatever and you may play like the cop that walks on or you may play like there's a way for you to make a buck mm -hmm. I think the theater most plays are going to range from like four to ten people like it so it you know there's only so many roles in the play itself mm -hmm. um and for those roles you know which which roles are written for black people or which roles could have black people in them and I think that's one thing that we should challenge theaters on is that a lot of these roles I've seen in a lot of these plays, I'm like, well, this could be anybody. Okay. Let's talk about that. You see routinely that it's an all white cast. So right. Know, so either someone's not being creative enough or, you know, thinking outside of the box or people are just too comfortable and want to cast the same favorites and the people that, and that's not to discredit those actors who get those roles because I think you know they're talented and they earned it and what have you but I think it's we have to transform thinking of you don't have to wait for fences to be on your roster right black people you could have somebody black in, in barefoot in the park 
<laughs> okay, great. Absolutely. Black people can be barefoot in the park. That's what I'm saying. Absolutely, absolutely. So, and I think that it's a. Uh, I mean, we saw with Hamilton. I think Hamilton is a great example of you have people of color. A lot, I mean, the cast is mostly black playing these these white founding fathers, these white people. But it was interesting to people. It was captivating to people because it gave a different perspective. It was creative. It was innovative. And I think that a lot of these leaders have to push the button. And I, but I just think also the first step is just cast black people in roles that aren't written for black people. Yeah, right. or, you know, so. this is like this right here is my whole thing. You know, it's my this is my whole whole thing, which is exactly what you're saying. Like, you know, already roles are limited in terms of the ones that are specified for people of color for black people, but but it doesn't have to stop there. The, this this assumption that the default character, like unless stated otherwise, the character is white, that has to stop. You know, and that's it doesn't reflect the world that we live in, and there's no reason why the you know the soccer mom, the lawyer, the boy. Friend, the wife, the you know, the anybody can't be a black actor. It doesn't have to say that. And um, something that I was talking about in a previous discussion that uh, I was having with Mr. James Wheatley and Omari Tao is that um, oh shoot, I just lost my train of thought. Um, darn it, just lost my train of thought. But it was all about that. <laughs> it was all about um, you know not. Uh, that, oh, that even playwrights are specifically including that information in their little notes and saying, please um, be inclusive in your casting, be creative, cast this in a diverse manner. So there really is no excuse. And, um, and so to James's point as well, so, you know, if we already are in a town that has, you know, three equity houses, and um, and so, you know, there's such a great number of talented actors who are doing community theater. And for those who don't know, you know, community theater doesn't pay anything. So the, the actors who are who are working are doing it purely for the love of it, for the love, you know. And um, and so if so. It, there, so, I mean, all the more it, it feels like a slap in the face where you have to, you have, you know, you want to do something, you want to do it to engage in it, to be part of the community, to do something that you really love to do, and then to be um, told that there are just, there are no opportunities for you simply because those roles um, haven't been written for you um, is, is, yeah, no. And it's funny because um, it's like, I'm a, in film, like back in the film, like, so you look at, I'm gonna give you a couple of Denzel movies, Pelham 1, 2, 3, and Manchurian Candidate. Mm -hmm. Frank Sinatra played the character that, that Denzel played in Manchurian Candidate. Mm -hmm. And um, Roger Mathau played the character that he played in uh, Pelham 1, 2, 3. So it's like, film, like, there's no, there's no barrier. So it's like, okay, hey, it wasn't, it was written for whoever. And I feel like a lot of plays are like the words are just, it's there. Like, hey, man, this is this is written. I can do I can do this. I like I, I I've seen this in real life. I've seen this stuff in real life. So it's like the 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 writing is there to help you know. And I know I like I like Steve Stephen Alley Gurgis. He he does a lot. Like his, he's one of my favorite playwrights. And he and his writing is is pretty much. It's all like like you can go across the board with it. You yeah. can go across the board with his with his writing. Anybody can play in those in those roles. Mm -hmm. It's just like you know, except the ones that are specific. You're right. You're right. Specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Imani, so how has has going into writing and directing and all right? Did you? I know you did it last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was this something that you produced? Yeah, I think, yeah, so I, I put a lot of my money into it, and then uh, we were lucky enough to receive a sponsorship, and then just also, too, having uh, a cast and, and a crew that were willing to be, I mean, we compensated people, but, you know, it's, it's, an indie, it's a very indie project, so it's sort of like, this is all I can get, I promise you, um, 
But I think I, I got to a place where I was very disgruntled with just as an actor, period, feeling like the roles that I wanted to act in weren't there, whether it was in film or, and I, I had just had an, an audition with uh, 13 Reasons Why on Netflix. Oh. The audition was for like, literally it was like hairdresser. Mm-hmm. And I showed, I drove all the way to San Francisco and I paid and they, a super high amount for parking and I'm like trying to make sure I look all cool and and I go up there and I look and see like literally five other women that look just like me <laughs> <laughs> oh but Imani nobody could look like you this is this is impossible you're original nope, you're one of the got, you look just like her mom <laughs> they all- she's an actual carbon copy of her mom <laughs> right so I'm like, and then also there's no script. So I go in there and I'm like, well, where's the script? And they're saying, just um, just cut her hair and improvise. Just say, ooh, girl, that looks good. Or ooh, you know, and I'm just like, this is not what I want to play. Because I had known what I played in theater. And I have been fortunate to play, play in really great roles and, and, and productions in theater. And so I'm like, why am I sitting here trying to cut somebody? Like, what is he, what even is this? And I think I... This very disgruntled place. Yeah. And, like, I gotta use this energy. I guess. Yes, I can't be mad. I can't. And then that's where I was like, I'm just start writing. I'm just, I'm gonna write what I want to see. And for me, I I love dramas. I love like complex, nuanced pieces. I love just character studies, all of that stuff. And so I just I was like, let me write what I want and let me write for. Black actors, because I do know that there is a deficit. I do know that a lot of Black actors want really nitty, you know, interesting roles, and there's a lack of them. And so I'm like, let me just, let me just see. And James is actually in my movie. Oh, I didn't know that. James, where are you holding back? You didn't say that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm in there. So we we've had the, the the joy of acting together, and and I got to direct him and see just what an egomaniac he is. You what? Know. Wow. wow. She don't, said don't do that. Sorry, love, sorry enough stigmas out there for me. Don't put that one on me. No, no, no. <laughs> He's super talented. He's very easy to work with. It, it was a joy. I mean, I think James is, when you find those actors who are just good all the time and on point, it just, you don't have to do too much, right? Get them where you need to go. He's that actor. So there's your kudos. You too, Imani. Well, go ahead and give the full-on pitch for the for the movie. So, what is it called? What's it about? Um, and is it available for? Is it you know? Are you going the film festival? Starting. What's happening? Is there any footage? Is there, so, so what you said, Atom, is right. Like we did, we did shoot it, finished shooting it about well, maybe a couple months ago. But I wrote it about a year ago. But um, it, it's now in post production, so it's not entirely done. But the film is called Whirlpool. Um, it's a drama, and it's about uh, a man, a family man, who makes a decision in his in his sort of his teens that sort of later comes back to haunt him, and that that decision, which is sort of like a secret that he's kept within him, sort of all comes out, and it's sort of how he rectifies that and how he handles things within his family. So it's uh, definitely a drama, a lot a lot of heartbreak and a lot of tragedy, mm-hmm. but also of <laughs> and some positivity. So, um, but yeah, we're hoping it'll be done, hopefully, honestly, like in a month or two. Oh, good. So we, we've been working really hard to get it all finished. So that, that's where we're at. Okay. All right. Good stuff. Okay. Yeah, it definitely was so, fun, fun working on it too, by the way. Nice. Yeah. So at this, so I like what you were saying, and I completely relate to um, taking the, the energy of frustration and channeling it into something productive, something mm-hmm. that can make a difference. And something that, that I've been thinking about a lot, I mean, this goes into other things as well, but I think um, not only creatively, but also in on the heels of the murder of George Floyd and thinking about a lot of the things that I really, a lot of the systems that I really dislike about 
life, about society, about um, you know the way things are, and and also as somebody who's a parent, I have two young children, and it's really put me into this contemplative place of do I want to stick around and try and change the way things are, or basically do I want to jump ship? and you know take care of me and mine and do my own thing and um i mean i don't even know how much i want to say about that right now because it's actually a very emotional topic for me so i really should say more um but i'm gonna throw that out there to um i'm gonna throw it out there to you james what are your thoughts on you know and again you can respond to that with respect to um the arts you know, creatively speaking in Sacramento um, with regards to the things that you see that you would like to be different? Do you want to be a part of the the change and the solution? Or do, do you have ways in which you are thinking, you know, let me go my own way and do my own thing? Or is it a little bit of both? Like, what do you think about that? It's definitely a little bit of both. Um, just because it's the arts have always been, and to me, just period, and, and just throughout the years and throughout the time, is just, arts have always been a a safe place, you know, and it's always been a place where you know where you, it, you can what you can explore, and and when it's things going on in the world, the things that are going on in the world, those are ways to escape it, you know. Theater and the arts are a way to escape it, and and you can face it dead on as well you know yeah. as far as you know with projects and things that 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 discuss it and I definitely want to be a part of the change and I definitely want to just kind of do my own thing too and do and and but I, I want it to be because I don't want to like I don't want to mess it mess it up at the same time you know and especially you because it's something that's that's been been around for so long as far as the arts you know it's been around so long I don't want to just make it to where take it take it away from someone that who's who's okay this is this is my safe place and this is or somebody who's all the way just want to keep it the way it is you know and then you know you take it from them and it's like oh okay hey you know this that's all I knew so now it's 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 this whole new thing now I, you know you when you change it too much that pe some people just might not that's my, in my mind like it's a part of me that says hey you know what just leave it alone just Keep your head down and keep 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 on pushing. Wait, 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 wait. Let, wait, let's talk about this for a second. So when you say you don't want to change it too much and and like can you expound on that? Like what are you talking about specifically? I because at the end of the day, I feel like certain things, if I can how can I? There there is a there is a, a radical change. It's like I just I'm just scared to to say, hey. You know, we we need to just completely overhaul this the, the arts as far as is, is what I'm saying you know, as far as the arts. I don't think it it needs to be completely overhauled. It just needs to be that that portion. And I feel like if I'm if when I think about changing things, like I really want to just pull stuff out, like like certain things, like okay, for instance, um, <laughs> I was I was I was speaking to somebody the other day about. Um, about politics. And I was saying, like, if a person is, it has been in politics for more than 10 years, they should be, go we don't need them. You should okay. be, it should be a, it should be a term for politics. Like, okay, you have 10 years. And that is a, a complete change. Like, if, like, that's something that people wouldn't be used to. So mm -hmm. to me, when I think of changing things, I, okay. I, I think of a complete change. And I don't want to, I don't know the, the changes that I would, that I would do, but I would, but definitely go in and like really go in and sandblast the whole thing. Like, okay, we got to, this has to be changed. Hey, this has to be gone. This has to be gone. But you know, it's just, or see more, maybe see more, more of this. And you know, some people might not, might not take it, take it, take it the right way or take it, take it the way that, that, you know, like if there's audiences, you know, you have audience people, people who come to see plays, they might not take it like, Hey, okay. They just they just changed the whole thing. Now we got now we have to go see this kind of play that we you know we we're not used to seeing this or we're not used to seeing this kind of stuff. Right, theater, well, theater. and that's the risk, right? I mean, 
I, I was actually having a, a conversation with Michael Stevenson about this a couple of weeks ago where, um, and I was asking him just because I genuinely wanted to know, like as an artistic director, who do you have to answer to? Like who, you know, so obviously you, like I was asking him questions about, um, you know, who's on the board and, um, you know, who do you have to answer to in terms of like your, your subscribers, your audience, your, the rest of your staff, because yeah, I mean, there are always going to be, um, first of all, no change doesn't happen without uh, resistance. There are always going to be resistance to change. You know, I mean, I think that's a lot of the reason why, um, you know, theater tends to like the, the the base of the theater audience is going to be white people over a certain age, like whether that's forty or fifties or whatever. I mean, I know you're laughing because it's kind of and and so um, so and, and we can't necessarily make assumptions about what those people want to see or what they would resist seeing. Like we can't we can't know. We can we can maybe make a supposition that it'd be like, well, I didn't come here to see barefoot in the park with black people. I mean, I don't know, but, but the thing, <laughs> so barefoot in the park, I mean, um, but the That's thing is, way. <laughs> we don't know. Is, it, is that Neil Simon? No. Yep. Yeah, his, is. his work is the same. It's like, you can be anything. Yeah. Neil yeah. Simon's plays are, you can be, it, you can be green and do, it don't matter what color you are. You can cast barefoot in the park you can cast it. Um, you can have a rainbow in that in that thing, like, and it'll be, and it'll work. So, right. So, unless and until you know, there is the willingness that um, and the courage to put a rainbow of people in there, then there can't be any um, any. We don't know how people were, will react and will respond. You know. Well, what about you, Imani? Because I'd love to stay on this question because I'm like. I'm getting all fired up now. So with, with regards to um, where do you stand in terms of like feeling like you want to be a part of the change or to drive the change and be part of the solution? And where, or do you feel like, you know what, screw this, like, let me do my own thing because this whole, this whole system and this whole setup is not changing and there doesn't seem to be really any deep desire to change it. Where do you, what do you think? I think I think all all methods are important. I think they're all vital. I you know there's a big debate within the black community about the Oscars, the awards, right? Like why every year I've heard people say why every year do we get so rolled up in the Oscars and whether there's black nominees or not and whether black people win or not, you know, why don't we create our own thing. Why don't we support the BET Awards, the NAACP Awards, the Image Awards, right? Why don't we put that energy into that? And I think that, I think that both conversations are important. I think that it is important for us to create our own spaces where we can just be authentically ourselves. I think, I think it's why, I mean, James and I, we, we have a history with Celebration Arts, right? I mean, and you would interview Mr. James Wheatley where that is a very, very sacred space to me, right? It's a space that has been held down by a Black artistic director for decades, uh, who's multi-talented and who will cast the most experienced actor and the, and the least experienced. No experience. <laughs> experience. No experience. <laughs> I will give you a shot. Come on in and I will mm-hmm. do what I know and, you mm-hmm. know, let's do it, right? Like, that's a beautiful, beautiful space to have. And I think we have to respect that and honor that and create more spaces like that while also too calling out and holding accountable some of these theaters, some of these award shows, whatever, that that are not as inclusive as they could be or not thinking of other people as they could be. I think think we have to look at having both at, at the same time and it's not like an either or conversation. It's sort of like looking at everything at once. Mm-hmm. I feel like that that's the way ahead. Because I, I think it's also paramount that that black actors and black creatives don't get so lost in trying to be accepted by, you know, white controlled place, whether it's a theater or it's, a, you know, a gallery, an art gallery, or it's a, you know, I mean, I, I think we have to also 
be mindful of our own self-care and our own value, right? So it's like, do you value yourself or do you only feel valued when you have validation from white people, essentially? Wherever that institution may be, whether it's the arts or corporate America or whatever, but like, do you see your value without validation? Mm -hmm. That's great. That's a great point. Yeah, James, you were... You you had something you were gonna piggyback on off of that? Just you said about you know being accepted, you know, just gotta stop wanting to be accepted. Cause that's what to me, like that's that is a lot of times because it and it happens like trying to want wanting to be accepted is is just one of those things that, that is hard, especially for creatives, period. You know, because yes. for one, that's that's just our our thing. Like, you know, we want to be accepted anyway. Like we we wanna that's that's why we do this. Do that's why we're creatives. That's why we we perform to be accepted. You know, so our so our 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 weirdness or whatever is accepted. You know, because it's accepted in in this arena. It's accepted here. So you know, and then at the end of the day, like you know, we gotta. It's hard, but you know, that's one of those things that you gotta stop wanting to be accepted by just you know by by like you said, white people. Yeah, I mean, I, it's probably just semantics, but I do think that you know there is a there is a, a difference or, you know, it's maybe it's just a shade of nuance of, you know, I think a lot of creative people, I think what we want really is to be, to be seen. I mean, I think that, um, you know, to be, to have a voice really, you know, I mean, I think that there are people who are, I think you go into the arts, um, well, maybe you don't go into it, but as you, mature in the arts, you realize that not everybody is going to accept or to like um, what you're doing. Um, but I think that, at least I'll speak for myself, it's, it's become more and more and more important for me to, to be, to have my own voice and for that voice to be an authentic one and for that voice to be heard. And so I don't know. I think that um, when it comes to things like being able to work in, in, in town in the professional theaters and to, to make sure that I have those opportunities available to me, I don't, at least not consciously, I'm not thinking of it as like, oh, these are white institutions, um, whether it be Sacramento Theater Company, Capitol Stage or B Street. Well, one of those feels like a white institution. <laughs> and um, that being said, like, I think that, um, yeah, it isn't, I, 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 being accepted is, is or, or, you know, kind of making it um, or having the opportunity, it really feels to me like it's about, you know, it's about representation and it is about like, well, there's no reason for me not to be able to participate in this space. Like I want to have a seat at the table and I want to participate in the conversation because I have something to offer. Um, and so if it just <laughs> so happens and, and, but I do feel that, you know, that representation and that, and, and that representation is different than um, like that's what's, a word where it's not symbolism it's like when do oh tokenism yes it's not that's not the same thing like i mean i'm getting into all these conversations with myself about like um about uh you know the nuances of these this different language maybe it's all just semantics but i i can very specifically i can say that there are times um at all of the theater companies in town where i have not been called in for an audition for something that i felt like i would be great for this or i just i want the opportunity to and and so i i ask you know i like i knock on that door and i say yeah i'd like to audition for this um for this role and and for the most part and i and i think i've i've primarily done that at capital stage and a couple of times at Sacramento Theater Company, and I've never been denied, certainly. And, um, you know, not every one of those auditions did I knock out of the ballpark, but some of them I really, I did, and I felt great about it. Whether or not I got the role, I felt like it was really important to, to show up and to mm -hmm. say like, hey, this character, this lead character in Rapture, Blister, Burn, like I could play that, you know, and have that director be like, 
you know, she could play that. Like I hadn't even thought of you because it didn't say black woman in her forties. Right. But, um, but I see you there now. And like, and, and if that could have just even the tiniest bit of a ripple effect so that the next time when that director is casting something and it doesn't specifically call for a person of color could, you know, whether it's that they think of me or somebody else and be like, Hey, I could, yes, there's no reason not to in Imani for this role or, um, you know, Taylor Vaughn or James Allison or, you know, so I think that's really important as well. Yeah, yeah well, we, and it's funny because James and I were talking earlier about, you know, we, we only have three, three professional theaters in Sacramento, right? So Sacramento is kind of small. I mean, there are places that offer stipends, but historic, like there's three and, um, we were saying that out of the three, you know, Capital Stage has been the most just progressive in, in having this conversation. And I mean, because the first time I was casted in a role that I didn't feel like was kind of constructed around my race was I, I did a, a show called The Nether at Capital Stage and I just played a detective, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? There was nothing in it that said she had to look blonde or blue, you know, whatever, like detective. and then, I said, hey, well, you, you know, Imani could play this role. And I think that's what a lot of, of us want is sort of, are you looking at my skills right. as an actor? Or are you because I'm Black and fit the demographic of the role, right? And I think if you look at the skills of the actor and really what they can do and what they've done, then it's, it becomes a lot easier. But like you said, sometimes it takes having to have that conversation and it takes you know, the other side, the artistic director, whoever having to be, you know, like, oh, well, damn, let me, <laughs> right? right. But, but James and I were also saying that there are some places where it feels almost just like, so you know, like, it feels like, you know, you could be doing a better job and you're not. You're not. Like, you know, a lot of actors in the community, you know, right? Because like I've had conversations with you. We've emailed, we we see each other on the street, and we say, hey. And yet year after year, your plays look the same, right? So that and I think that's where it starts to feel like, are you just do you just not know or do you just not care? And is it just easier to keep going with what you're doing? Some I, I, just to, um not to cut you off, but so I think I think some 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 of those some of those theaters really they think about it in their minds they they think about it like oh you know because they know who's they know they know they know our talent they know who's talented and who's not they know in town I'm just speaking for in town they know who's oh yeah this person this person can this person can play the, that person can act I wish I had a role for them it's that's not what it is it's not about I wish they could, they can play this part it's I wish I had a role for them I wish I had something for you to play I'll well, we gotta do a play for that person but it's not uh, you do this play we just invite that person in to read and see what they what they can do with this one you know mm -hmm. so it's just that's to me it's like hey just think about hey think about who, who you who you have out there in town and say hey okay let's call this person in and, and read let's read let's see what they can do with this with this role because at the end of the day i i uh, i feel like i'm not just i'm, I'm an actor you know i'm, I'm an actor i'm i whether I'm black or whatever, I feel like I'm an actor and I, I, I just happen to be black. And that's what sometimes, and, but I, and I do take on the fact that I am a black actor and because of the, the things that, that I have to go through it as a black actor. But I just feel like I, I'm just an actor, man. I can act. I can do, you know, if you want me to, you want me to, however you, whatever you, the, the role calls for, I can do it, you know, if, and I've done it. So it's just to me, like, I look at it like that because when I was in school, when I came up, our director, he he colorblind casted like like mm -hmm. it, it was and it was crazy because and that's just how I was how it was taught to me like it was colorblind casting like I'm I'm doing Moe and I'm I'm like I'm the only black person in the cast and I'm the lover and you know mm -hmm. so I'm running around and you know I'm running around doing I'm like whoa this is crazy to me mm -hmm. so I didn't think anything of it back then but mm -hmm. I just knew like hey I'm I'm the only black kid I'm the only black person in the play and it's you know, in this in, in a time where, hey, you, black people ain't supposed to be doing this. 
and you know, and so, but I'm I'm doing it, and I'm like, okay, I'm I'm just the actor. That's what, and that's I think that's what my teach that teacher wanted to teach me, wanted to tell me, like you are an actor. Yeah, you are, you are an actor. Like this is this is like every time he cast me in something, you know, it was and he did colorblind casting, and he and he would say it. He's like, yeah, this is this is you know, this is how I'm gonna do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's great, and I feel like that is. I think that is so important, actually, because of it's it's when you are growing as an actor and um, you have those experiences that really shape your mind as to what you can be and what's possible and how you can see your yourself because you have to see yourself that way before you can then go and have other people see you that way. Mm-hmm. So if you see yourself as you know, I'm, I am the, the, the lover, the leading man, I'm, right. you know, Hamlet, I'm, you know, whatever, whatever it is, then you can, you take that confidence and then you can, um, you know, translate that into the types of roles that you go out for and your expectations to be regarded in with respect to your skill and your sensibilities. I think that's great. Um, there, the teacher that I studied with in Los Angeles, I studied with her for the better part of seven years. And that was also, it wasn't so much that she cast colorblind per se, but in terms of pairing up actors for scenes and also actors with directors, it was, I think there was some attention paid to, um, you know, sensibility really sort of like, okay, who might be good for this? But it was a a very quick process at the end of each class. So there wasn't a whole lot of thought given to it, but I played such a range of characters and, um, you, you know, such a range and, you know, anything from like film noir, strangers on a train, you know, type stuff to um, contemporary uh, film and theater things. It was, you know, classical theater. It was, um, I got to, I was thinking about this recently, actually, there were a couple of, there were a handful of times where I was cast as a male character. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember the first time, the first couple of times it, it, it was just like, it, it was just happenstance. Um, there were, you know, we were short on something. It was like, okay, well, you know, you, you can play that role. And I was like, and one of the things I really liked about it, and it's something that I use to this day in life, as well as with, um, with certain roles is that if I'm cast as a male character, the first thing I would do is give myself permission to take up space. And it's been something that has really helped me in, in acting as well as in life because I'm like, okay, so now I got to sit with my legs as far apart as possible. I'm like, yes, you know, just like, you know, because women have such a tendency to make themselves small. And, um, and one of the things, I mean, I'm six feet tall, so there is no making myself small, but it also, it's, it's, it's about an energy about like, yeah, I'm taking up some space right here. Um, and then there was a time after there was a, a role that I played that, that it, it just went over, the scene went over really great. And then, um, the next time, so at the end, end of that class one of the directors like specifically requested me to play like the male role <laughs> in his scene I'm like there actually are real men available he's like no but you have the right energy you know this, it was ridiculous but anyway I digress <laughs> but um but I do have yeah. that's all it is <laughs> I'll, I'll take that <laughs> but yeah I think it's really um I think, uh, Imani, there was a, no, no, no. I was, I was thinking that there was a role that I had seen you play at Sac State, um, but that was, a, it, it was Intimate Apparel. Is that right? Okay. I wish you were fantastic in that. Um, it, as you were growing as an actor, did you have any type of similar experience where you were cast in roles that were non, um, specific, non, specified as far as like ethnicity or did you tend to get cast more in things that were like okay you know black women? yeah and it well I think well I think to your there's a difference between when you're I've had the experience of being casted in a playing a black playwright okay. where most of the characters are black and then therefore blackness is expressed I think in a more human way where 
Sometimes when you are cast as the black person in a play written by a white person, blackness is like the focus of why you're in the play. If that makes sense. Okay. Right. Yes. But, so I'm so I'm thinking like with Intimate Apparel, which is written by Lynn Nottage, and it's about this black seamstress, and I and I play the role of her 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 really good friend who's also a, a prostitute in the film, and she's like she's also a patron though. She creates these beautiful corsets for her, and they just have a great friendship. But what was beautiful about their friendship or their sisterhood is because we got to play these really beautiful scenes of just connecting, and maybe there were little arguments. It was just all about our humanity. It was about how yes. we talk to each other and how. And so I think when you have a play written by a Black playwright, Blackness is less, it's, it's not really what's going on. Right. Black. We all know we're all Black. Right. Right. It's about like, what's actually the drama? What's actually what's yeah. on for these people? Exactly. As opposed to some plays I've done where I'm like, okay, like the role I'm playing, she's the Black woman and she's going to be kind of sassy in this moment. That's the word, sassy. <laughs> this thing, right, where your purpose of being there is to to be the, the to be the black person, you know, and and have the the conversations. It's probably going to be it's probably a play that explicitly deals with race, and that is your purpose for being there. Like, except well, you well you were in Disgraced, right? You were mm -hmm. in well, and, and Disgraced is one of my favorite plays. I know. You can see like, a lot of different themes, and I think race plays a part, Islamophobia plays. I mean, there's a lot of different things that are going on in the play, but there is the role of, but, so I, well, sorry, now I'm like asking you a question, but yes, of course. that role, and I forget, what's the name of the, the role in the, in the, the character? Play? Yeah, the character. Joy. Joy, yes, yes, yes. Jory, J-O-R-Y, Jory. Jory, yes, 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 sorry. Um, what I love about that role, though, is she is, I mean, she's, well, one, she's got the job of like, anyway, there's a little drama and I'm trying to go into it, but, but I mean, she's, she's independent. She's working at this firm with him. I mean, there's, there's nothing about the role that feels stereotypical, but it is like written as the black woman in story. Right. And so, but it's still a nuanced role. It's not like, you know, so I guess I wanted mm -hmm. to you of how did that feel playing that? Did it feel any, or did it just feel like I'm playing, I'm just playing a human, I'm just playing a person? The latter, it felt like that. It felt like it, it was a really well written, I, I love the play um, and it was a, a wonderfully written play and the character, like I will share with you that um, there are only a handful of roles that I've played where I felt that the connection between who I personally am and then the character that I'm playing was very strong and very seamless. And Jory was one of them. By the time I was in production with that play, I felt like I, that I was like, oh, it's now it's, I'm going to be being myself, um, but just on this stage in this apartment. It didn't even feel, by the way, the set for that play was so wonderful. It didn't even feel like a set. I felt like, you know, when every night when the lights went up, it just felt like entering this apartment for this dinner party as really as myself, which is to take away from my acting skills. Like, yes, I was acting, but but it did feel um, it, it, it was it was wonderful. It was. And I will also credit uh, Michael Stevenson's direction for that. I mean, he's just got such a, a fantastic way of working with the actors and eliciting um, performances that don't feel like performances. It felt like, um, just living life in and dealing with these circumstances and this drama and these people, um, in, in, within those, those parameters. So, um, so yeah, I didn't, so certainly Jory was written to, it wasn't written the uh, ethnicity that was ascribed to Jory was explicitly, you know, one of a black woman in her, you know, whatever, how old, ever old she was supposed to be, um, 40 year old black woman, and she was a lawyer. And so there, those things were, you know, the given circumstances. But beyond that, you know, it just felt like um, everything that I want in, in the roles that I play, which is the, uh, the, 
ability to be able to express the full humanity, to explore and to express the full humanity of the character, you know? And, 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 the, and the fact that we're having this conversation, like all of a sudden I'm just vaguely annoyed because, <laughs> because I'm like, the, you know, I know all of a sudden I am, I'm like, that, you know, the, the fact that that's something that, that we have to kind of like, we're like, oh, thank you, you know, you know, finally, <laughs> that's like a full human being is ridiculous like yeah. why 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 is there so little of that I mean nobody I mean can you imagine like wh what what it would be like to um to not have to to, to do this all the time to just be you're like, oh, yes, this is a full, fully fleshed out character it's not a stereotype it's not you know just this this small slice of slice of a person that that isn't really authentically how people are it you know so uh i don't know yeah uh, the crazy part and this is this is another another thing that that it's like it's already hard as a black actor but and it's even different and harder probably for i think for women of color actors of women of color Act, women women actors of color or and it's like those are the roles that usually are those stereotypical roles they always have a stereotypical uh or you know um black women role you know like like you said sassy she's sassy like and i and you, like when you read the script you can oh man this is here, here we go you, here we go down, like ah oh. <laughs> well, well this is what they did I, and then i and i always say i'm gonna with, with you He's gonna do this. <laughs> I wonder how she's gonna do this, or you know, like yeah. that's this. I know it's as just. I know it's probably a different, a whole different dynamic as a woman actress, as a black woman actress. I know it's totally a whole nother, a whole nother um, Zoom for a whole nother day. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it really, and I, and I do think that um, you know probably uh, people of color and black women being at the helm of, of writing the material or, and being in those positions of, of um, yeah, of being responsible for how those portrayals get put out there is a lot of where the answer lies with that because otherwise it's really a lot of um, trying to I mean, I, I can't tell you, I mean, I, there, there are productions that I've been in, in, in this town in which um, I, you know, was playing a character in, in a certain way and, and the way, a way in which I was really looking to, to delve into the humanity of that character. And then somebody, whether it be the director or, so, or producer, approached me and because what they weren't seeing is enough of a stereotype. So I, you know, so I would be getting like this little side coaching, you know, to essentially play the character like as more of a mammy or, or to be like a little bit sassier with it. I'm just like, you know, like, wow. I mean, you know, and I, and all because I'm all because I'm you know infusing some some humanity and dignity and or whatever it was like trying to make this person a, a whole person as opposed to a um, you know a caricature. Like, who wants to see that? Right. Or do, do people want to see that? Like, why? Why? I. It's so funny you say that because I I ran into the almost the exact situation and it was like we had been rehearsing the play uh, once again it was a play written by a white playwright who wrote everybody else is white it's four person cast who wrote a black woman's role in it she's black you know, she, and <laughs> <laughs> felt was like Ugh, just some of the jokes and and i think that goes also into when we look at representation as well the writing room right because me personally i'm not comfortable writing and I don't have the audacity either to write a script for five Latinas, period. Because I'm like, I don't, I don't know that experience and I can ask a bunch of people, but I would rather fund that project. I'd rather support, or I'd rather bring in other people. And maybe I co-write or I throw ideas in, but I don't, 
feel like I have the experience to write authentically for that community, right? Mm-hmm. But we see this all the time. And, and then, like I said, it was a role written for a Black woman. We had rehearsed it for however many weeks, two, three weeks. Literally, technique, the director comes to me and says, hey, you Mike, you know, literally the, the kind of like, it doesn't feel Black enough. Like the way we're delivering her, you know, she has some jokes in her and I just want to do a bit more, you know, sassy. Sassy. There we go. Like literally doing the thing with their neck. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. I'm be real. Because I feel like we see parodies of this, right? Like we're like, we see this is a joke at this point. And I can't believe this something came this to me. Um, and I was so offended as well because, you know, Black people were not monolithic as well. And maybe yeah. a different Black actress would bring a different uh, sort of persona or what have you to the character because that feels her, right? But whether it's her or me or someone else, we're all still Black women. So how, whatever we bring to it is Black. It's still authentic. It doesn't, right. I don't have to talk a certain way. I don't have, have to move a certain way. I don't have to walk a certain way. to be right. Black people come in all types of everything, right? Right. Skin color to body shape to dialect to everything so exactly exactly so it was just kind of like what is it that you want to see and then I feel like if I'm playing it for laughs are you are you in it like are you laughing with me or are you laughing at me (laughs) wait so how did you respond to this I'm just curious just say it I don't you're not using any names I just want to know I I said, well, I don't understand. I kept trying to get him to clear. <laughs> <laughs> Just say it. I want you to play black. <laughs> she was like, you to be more black. And I, you know, what? and to be honest, because that was maybe, that was now five, five years ago, because I was pregnant at the time, um, like really early on pregnant. And at that time, I didn't feel like I had a voice. I didn't feel like even though, like, this wasn't at um, Broadway with, you know, like, this was just a lo- local theater. I didn't feel like I had a voice to say, and what's the worst? Could, if I, if I would have said, I'm offended by you saying that. Like, how dare you? Like, why would you say that? Or this is very, this is not constructive, you know, whatever. Is he going to kick me out of the show? No. Like, he's not going to do that. But I think just the fear of, well, I don't want to be angry. And I don't want to be hard to work with. And, you know, I mean, I think it's why a lot of times I've been conditioned when I show up at a set or like, or at a, at a table read, I'm always like, just, just super professional, personable, da, 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 da. And we all know in theater, there's so many personalities, so many people who just say off the wall stuff and they, they break out in the song and they do whatever. And and or just or rude or or whatever. And I've always just I've always trained myself to be very professional and very on point and memorize my lines on time because I didn't want anyone saying she's hard to work with, she's got attitude, she's whatever. And like I said, I didn't feel empowered as an artist, and I, and I didn't know how to assert myself and say I should just be who I am. Obviously, not be mean to people, but I. Sh- didn't feel like I have to always act a certain way to, you know, get the role or to get through the rehearsal process, right? But I think that a lot of Black actors, we have that, like, we can't just always just be in these spaces. There's always, like, that second brain going. I'm like, you gotta go in your tap dance. Yeah. I think that that, so I do feel, you know, that that is, it's part of the journey. I mean, I think that's totally, that makes sense. Um, I think that that is part of the journey as, as, as artists, as actors, and as Black actors, you know, to, to grow in our, um, our sense of empowerment about what we, you know, in responding to situations that arise like that. I mean, I can, I can definitely think of, many an audition that I went on in Los Angeles where I was, you know, called in for some like, you know, booty popping girl or something like some stupid stuff that like that it, it, it took a while for me to to tell my agent like I'm not going. I'm not going to this audition because it's not but, um because it it doesn't make any sense. Like it's not I'm not going to, it, 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 this role isn't right for me. I'm not right for this role. Um, 
But I do think, uh, like, you know, in the couple of situations that I alluded to, like, yeah, it's not like I talked back and, you know, and said that, like, oh, okay, well, I feel like you're trying to make me, like, play a mammy or whatever. Like, you know, I just took it in and was mad and, you know, probably went and, like, talked to somebody else about it and then just proceeded to, like, play the role the way that I was going to play it. Um, but but it, it certainly didn't create a good feeling. Um, I think that there are, I can think of a couple of situations, though, in which I, I have spoken up um, and about, you know, a, a discomfort about the expectation of of what it was that somebody was guiding me to do. So I do think it's, I do think it's a, a journey and it requires, um, you know, it's easier when there is, is a situation of mutual trust, when you have worked with that person before and there's any possibility that either it's a misunderstanding or that um, there's an, a, a, it's a teaching moment, but it's difficult. And I think just expanding it also from, you know, there can be, I think a lot of actors can feel, whether it's about something ethnicity specific or not, um, you know, we want to work. And so it's what you're, you're talking about. It's like, oh, well, if I speak up about this, am I going to get labeled as being difficult to work with? Um, and, um, and all of that. Like, I, I remember there was a really fantastic group that I, I was, I used to work within Los Angeles community theater and they did um, dance theater and that sort of thing. And, you know, to this day, one, she's one of my good friends. Her name's Jessica Schroeder. She was the director and choreographer. And I was, I mean, I think maybe it was because I felt so comfortable with her. Um, I, she, there were a lot of things that she would, you know, have me do and, you know, whatever, whatever like direction she would give me or things that I would question or push back on. And, and I thought we were just having a, you know, a conversation at some point, like years later, I heard her say to somebody in my presence, she was like, Oh my gosh, you're, 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 you're totally, you're so hard to work with. I was like, what? Huh? What are you talking about? And so, and she was like, Oh yeah, you know, push back on everything, you know, whatever. <laughs> but, but we did several shows together. So I'm going to use that to say that if if you're if you're good at what you do, and there, there was no, there was never she cannot come here and talk about like that I was ever said anything in a in a disrespectful manner. I it was like we would engage about stuff. I'm like, well, I don't understand that direction because you know, or if you're just telling me to be angry, that doesn't give me anything. So like, what do you want? What's the objective? What do you want me to do? It was stuff like that talking about I'm difficult, whatever. <laughs> but I, all this is to say that, um, yeah, I think it's a journey. I think it's a journey to, uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> was talking about, I was just thinking about how um, note taking and things like that, like different things that you do as an actor that, you know, that you don't realize is that, you know, that other actors or other people they do certain things or have certain rituals or have whatever. And then you go to a, you work with people and then you see, oh, hey, everybody's doing this, but I'm not doing this. So maybe I should be doing this too. Like it almost gets you, I don't know. It was, that was just something me and me and Marty was talking about earlier as well. Cause I, I, I don't, I'm not a, I don't take, I don't really necessarily take notes. I, I keep our I, memory in my head. So, cause one thing for me, like in theater is in theater is, my block memorizing my blocking is easier when I when I do it in my in my head and I do it and I basically act it out memorizing my lines and blocking all that has to go through my head if I have to look at it on paper I don't never it don't translate that mm -hmm. way um, and just just one of those things that I don't do and like when directors ever see me they see me not right taking notes they always do like what's going on <laughs> <laughs> why are you not taking notes Oh, kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that making many a director crazy. <laughs> just like, hey, James, what's, what you doing over there? Got a pencil? <laughs> right. Um, and just, just one of those things, it, just, it never translates for me. Like certain things I might write down. I, I take down certain things, but when it comes to like, if I'm going to from point A to point B and 
like that. I know where point A is and I know where point B is. How I get there is pretty much how I get there. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I'll get there because it's in my mind. Mm -hmm. And I, I know I have to get to this point right here. So it's just, that's how it helps me. Remember my lines and my block. But this is, that's just me. Mm -hmm. I like it. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, um, I think we can wrap this up. I feel like we could keep going from topic to topic to topic to topic. So, but um, this was really great to, to talk to both of you. And um, once we are, have made it through the, uh, the world of COVID to the other side um, of all of this and the new normal of, uh, you know, what theater is going to look like and what film is going to look like, I look forward to um, seeing you both both there and um, perhaps, you know, be able to find something to work on together as well. So, yeah, this is, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. This yeah. is like, a, this is, I mean, this platform in itself is, is beautiful. It's beautiful that you're facilitating it. And I think that, yes, Black voices, Black artists' voices, because it, it's, it's great to have a, a platform to, to speak freely. It is. It really is. They're, they're the only theater doing it. So I'm like, hey, you know, prop. Michael Simpson because yeah. this is a really cool thing. Yeah. And if any other theater tries it, like, like you gotta, I, I look at it like you gotta look at the theater's history. Like, what were you doing before? Yeah, before, you, before everything happened, you know, right. like, like I like, and the only reason why I agreed to even do this was because I know I, I know that this theater, you know, I, their history is, you know, they don't, they don't just they 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 work with everybody. Yeah, you know, and this and it's definitely okay. This is you're not just trying to do this because hey, yeah. you know, because you're trying to get a check or whatever the case may be. Right. You know, you're doing this because hey, you know, we we really feel you guys, you know, because you I I, I I work with you know Cap State. I work with this theater and this whole platform is just you know to me it's 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 good and it's right. And mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't did it if I didn't feel like it was wasn't right. Yeah, I like that. It's good and it's right. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. On that I note. Also, I also, <laughs> just I have a plug that I would have like to do. So I, have a little, this is, I have a storytelling um, thing that I'm doing um, with Celebration Arts. And um, we're doing, a, like I get a storyteller every once a month and, you know, we just, they tell a story and then, you know, I basically perform the story. They say, I, I'm still, it's still evolving, but, okay. um, Basically, the storyteller sends me the audio of their story. I, I perform the story, like I film it and perform it. And then, you know, we talk about the story. And we like have a little little chat session because at the end of the day, we are storytellers. That's what, what are the basic basis of our whole entire thing is for storytellers. That's we're right. So just, you know, and I'm, I'm doing that one every first Saturday of the month on um, with uh, Celebration Arts. Okay, fantastic. My first guest is Patrick Hawkins Bird from the bailiff of Judge Judy. Oh, oh yeah? yeah. What do you know? All right. Okay, we'll keep an we'll keep an ear out for it then. Keep an eye out. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, guys. All right. All right. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.